what is accuracy then accuracy is the agreement of a particular value to the true value of the result it is the way of conveniently writing numbers that are too large or too small in standard decimal notation significant figures actually means in a scientific notation how many numbers you can tell that are certain that is said to be significant figures good morning everyone this is ambli unnikrishnan from the department of chemistry vidyashram school of excellence mysore so today we are beginning with the session 2 of your chapter some basic concepts of chemistry so in last class we discussed about the classification of matter properties of matter measurement and their units right so in today's class we will be discussing on uncertainty in measurement scientific notation and significant figures okay so let us begin with the first topic that is uncertainty in measurement so what does this word uncertainty means so in the study of chemistry we often come across experimental data and its calculations right so let us say if we want to calculate the length of any substance as such if you want to calculate the length what do you do you just not take one reading right you take three or four or more readings and then you calculate the average of it and the mean value will be the more perfect one than the individual ones right so there will be always a chance that there are some errors or uncertainties in your measurement that is why we take this four or five values and take the average of it right so in the case of uncertainty in measurements if there is some errors or uncertainties happening there are two words that are often used and which might be a little confusing for you those two words are precision and accuracy yes you might be using it often the word precision and accuracy but might not be clear with the difference between these two right so let's begin with precision so precision refers to the closeness of various measurements for the same quantity it refers to the closeness of various measurement that is as i said in the beginning you will be taking three or four values right for a single measurement you will be taking three or four values so the closeness between these values are called as to be precision if the values are close enough we call the measurement or the values are precise right so let us say we have the values 0.1 0.2 and 0.3 see these are the values that i got for my measurement when i did the experiment i got the values is 0.1 0.2 and 0.3 see there is only very small difference between these values the values are very very close enough right so we can say that my measurement or these values are precise right so now what is accuracy then accuracy is the agreement of a particular value to the true value of the result okay it is the agreement of a particular value to the true value of the result so that means when we take the average of this and let's say the true value is 0.2 the true value that you should obtain after the experiment is 0.2 and you take the mean of this and the value that you get if they are close enough you say that your value is accurate right so let us take an example for this and try to understand what exactly is precision and accuracy right so these are the experimental results that were done by student a and student b so these are the values which was uh, noted down by student a and these are the values by student b so let us say assume the true value of the result is 5 so the true value of the result is given as 5 g we are going to see which values are precise and which values are accurate right so the values obtained by student a were 4.93 and 4.95 see these values are having only a difference of 0.02 yes so these two values are precise right they are very close enough so they are said to be precise now the average value 4.92 and the true value the difference between them is little more big right yes 5 and 4.92 they are not close enough so you cannot say that this value is accurate so i can say this value is precise but not 
accurate. Right? The values are precise but not accurate. Yes, now let's come to student B. The values he obtained were 4.99 and 5.01. The difference between the true values, the two values is still 0 0.02, right? So, I can say that these two values are precise. Now, the mean that I got is 5, which is exactly the same as your true value. So, what can I say? The values obtained by student B are precise as well as accurate, right? The values are precise as well as accurate. So, I hope you understood in the case of student A, 4.92 and 5 is having a big difference. That is why the values are not considered to be accurate. In this case, it is exactly the same as the true value. Yes. So, I hope you understood the difference between precision and accuracy. Now, moving on to the next part that is scientific notation. So, why do we use this scientific notation? As said, there are chances of errors or uncertainty when you do your experiments, right? So, the extent of these errors might be very less. That is a value of 0 0.00000 something. It, will, it can be very, very small. So, how do you represent these small errors or small quantities that we'll be studying in this scientific notation part? So, you can see it is a way of conveniently writing numbers that are too large or too small in standard decimal notation. So, the errors can be big. It can be a very, very large number or a very, very small number. So, how you can write it in a convenient way, we will be studying in the scientific notation part. So, this is how you represent it in the term of scientific notation. That is capital N into 10 raised to small n. It is in the exponent form. Yes, so the capital N and small n are not same. So, you can see the capital N value varies from 1 to 10 and your small n, the exponent can have values which are positive or negative. So, this is the way in which you have to represent your numbers. So, let's take the first example that I have given here. See, these many zeros are here. Yes, it is very difficult to represent it in this form. So, what do you do? You represent it in this form, that is your scientific notation form. So, let's say the decimal point is in here. As said, your capital N should vary from 1 to 10. So, from here, I have to bring my decimal point to here. So, that my N value will be in the range of 1 to 10. So, how can you write it? Yes, this has to be 6.022 into 10 raised to what? So, as I said, you have to bring the decimal point from this side till here. Yes. So, what you have to keep in mind is, if you are moving your decimal point to the right, the value of your exponent increases. Okay. To the left, it increases and to the right, it decreases. Right. So, let's take these example and try to understand that. So, it is 6.022 into 10 to the power. See, I am moving this. I am moving the decimal point to the left. That means your exponent value will increase, right? So, when you count it, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I am changing the decimal point to 23 places to the left. So, what will be your exponent there? 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Yes, I am moving into the left. So, that means your exponent will be a positive value. Yes, I moved it to 23 places to the left. So, your final value will be 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Yes, now let's move on with the second one. 232.508. Now, how do you represent it? As said, your n value should vary from 1 to 10. So, I have to bring this decimal point in here. Yes. So, how can I write it? 2.32. 32508 into 10 to the power what? So, from here, I moved my decimal point two places to the left. So, what happens? It is 10 to the power 2. Yes. Now, in this case, 0 0.00016, how do I write it in the form of scientific notation? Yes, you have to 
get your capital N value in the range of 1 to 10. So from here, you have to move your decimal point to the right. Yes. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. Yes, I am moving it 4 places to the right. So what does my value become? 1.6 into 10 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4. I moved it 4 places to the right. So it becomes 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 4. Yes. And what about the last one? In the same way, we have to move it towards the right. Yes. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, I get 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 4. Yes. So, I hope you understood how to write your numbers in terms of scientific notation. Yes. So, now let's move on to the next part where you will be seeing how you can multiply, divide, add or subtract to scientific notations. Okay, so let's begin with multiplication. As you can see here, there are two terms that are given here. 5.6 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 6.9 into 10 to the power 8. So how do you multiply these two terms? What do you have to do first? You have to bring the similar terms together. That is 5.6 multiplied by 6.9 into you will take the exponent terms together that will be 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 okay so now what you can do you have to multiply these two terms that is 5.6 into 6.9 that will give you 38.64 multiplied by what do you do with the exponent terms 10 to the power 5 into 10 to the power 8 what do you do with that? What you have to do is you have to add the exponents or you have to add the powers. Yes, if it is multiplication, you have to add the powers. That is 10 to the power 5 plus 8. Yes, you added the two powers. So what will be your final answer? 38.64 multiplied by 10 to the power 13. 8 plus 5 will give you 13. So, this will be your final answer. Yes, clear? In the case of multiplication, you have to add your exponent terms. Now, let's move on to the next one that is division of two scientific notations. So, here it is given 2.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 5.5 into 10 to the power 4. So, you have to divide these two terms. So, as we did in the multiplication part, same thing you have to do first. Bring the similar terms together. So, what you can do here? 2.7 divided by 5.5 and yes. I brought the similar terms together. Now, what do you do? 2.7 divided by 5.5 you can do. That will be 0 0.4909 multiplied by 10 to the power. What will you do? It is division here, not multiplication. What will you do? 10 to the power minus 3 minus 4. You have to subtract the powers. Okay. So, it will be 10 to the power minus 3 minus 4. So that will be 0 0.4909. 0, 9 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7. Yes, clear? So, in the part where you do multiplication, you have to add the powers and in the case of division, you have to subtract your powers. So, I hope this part is clear. So, now let's move on to the next part that is addition and subtraction. So, in the case of multiplication, what did you do? You added the powers. Yes, in the case of addition and subtraction, you can only add it when the exponents are same. So, in the first uh, problem, you can see it is 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power 3. So, you can't add these terms. Either both the exponents uh, should be 4 or both the powers should be 3. Yes. So, what do I do here? 6.65 into 10 to the power 4. I keep it as it is. And what I am doing here, I am changing the exponent in the second term. I want to change it in terms of 4. So, what do I do? I can write it as 0 0.895. See, I changed or I moved the decimal point to the left. So, what happens? 
plus 1 will come on the power. That is 10 to the power 3 plus 1. Right? So, how we can you write it? 6.65 into 10 to the power 4 plus 0 0.895 multiplied by 10 to the power 4. Yes. So, see your two exponent terms or your the powers of the exponent terms are similar. Yes. Now, you can directly add it. How can you add? You have to add these two numbers that is your 6.65 plus 0 0.895 multiplied by 10 to the power 4. Yes, so you will get your answer as 7.545 when you add these two terms and 10 to the power 4. Yes, I hope it is clear. Yes, so you have to bring the uh, both the exponent terms similar then only you can add it. Now the same goes with the subtraction as well. Let us see 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 minus 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 3. So what will you do here? Again you have to make both your powers similar. So yes I am changing that the second term in terms of minus 2. So let us see how it is done. 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2. Yes, minus 4.8. I can write it as 0 0.48. Yes, so it becomes 0 0.48 into 10 to the power minus 3. And I moved it one place to the left, right? So my exponent increases. So it becomes plus 1. What is minus 3 plus 1? It is minus 2, right? So, it becomes 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 minus 0.48 into 10 to the power minus 2. So, here you can see my powers are same now. So, you can subtract it now. That is 2.5 minus 0 0.48 into 10 to the power minus 2. Yes, so that will be your answer. So, I hope it is clear how you can do multiplication, division, addition and subtraction of your scientific notations. Yes, in the case of multiplication, you have to add the exponents. In case of division, you have to subtract your powers. In case of addition and subtraction, first you have to change your powers in such a way that both the powers are similar and then you can go on with the addition or subtraction. So, now let us move on to the next topic that is significant figures which is very very important. Significant figures. So, what are significant figures? They are meaningful digits which are known with certainty plus one which is uncertain or estimated. So, in scientific notations we studied how you can represent numbers in a standard form or in a convenient form. The, that is what is scientific notation. Yes, significant figures actually means in a scientific notation how many numbers you can tell that are certain. That is said to be significant figures. So, there are certain rules for your significant figures. Yes, how many numbers you can say are certain or are significant is based on certain rules. So, we will go by one by one. The first one is all non-zero digits are significant. All non-zero digits, that means apart from zero, that is your one to nine, all the values are significant. So, let us take the example that is given here, 0 0.3456. See, in here the 0 is not significant, but your 3, 4, 5 and 6 are significant. All non-zero digits are significant. So, in this case, how many significant figures are there? There will be 4 significant figures. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Yes, now let us move on to the second one that is zeros preceding. Preceding means before. Zeros preceding to first non-zero digit are non-significant. That means, let us take the example of uh, 0 0.0067. So, what is given in the second rule? Zeros preceding to first non-zero digit are not significant. So, which is the first non-zero digit here? That is 6, right? So, the zeros before 6. So, you can see 0 0.0067. So, the zeros before your 6 are not significant. So, this 0, this 0 and this 0 will not be significant. Only your 6 and 7 will be significant, right? So, in this case, there are only 
two significant figures. Now let's move on to the third one. Zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. See, between two non-zero digits. So you can see two here and you can see your five here. These two are non-zero digits. So the zeros between these two non-zero digits are significant. So that means this zero, this zero and this zero become significant. So in total, how many significant figures are present in here? One, two, three, four, five and six, right? So there are six significant figures in this case. So now let's move on to the next rule. Zeros at the end or right of a number are significant provided they are on the right side of the decimal point. I'll read it on once more. Zeros at the end or right of a number are significant provided they are on the right side of the decimal point. So let's take few examples. See in here 0 0.200 is given. So what is given here? Zeros at the end or right of a number are significant only if they are present on the right side of your decimal point. So in here, the decimal point is present here. So you know this zero is not significant. Yes. Now what about these two zeros? It comes after the decimal point, right? So this and this zero will be significant. So in total, there are one, two and three significant figures in this case. Now let's move on to the next example. One zero zero point is given. So if the point is present in here, if a decimal point is present here, all these values will be significant. Now let's move on to the third one. Yes, as we discussed in this rule, the uh, zeros to the right of your decimal points are significant. So it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All these 5 values are significant. Right? Okay. So in this case, you understood that there are 3 significant figures because there is a decimal point. So if it was just 100, what it will be? Yes, these two zeros are not significant, right? Only non-zero digits are significant. So there will be only one significant figure. Now let's move on to the last one. Exact numbers have an infinite number of significant figures. Exact numbers has infinite number of significant figures. So let's take the example of 230. I'm saying that I have 230 balloons with me. So that is an exact number, right? So for an exact number, let's say 230, there can be infinite number of zeros that I can put here, right? So all these zeros are significant. So in total, we can say that for an exact number, there are infinite number of significant figures. So let's do some questions on this. Calculate the number of significant figures in the following. So the first one, you can see 0 0.00054. Yes, what did we study? The zeros preceding the first non-zero digits are not significant. So, this is the first non-zero digit here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, all these are not significant, right? So, there will be only two significant figures here. Yes, so in this case, 2, not 8. Yes, if it is an exact number, if you are talking about some exact number, 2, not 8 of something is present, then it can have infinite number of significant figures, right? Yes, if a decimal point is present here, what do I write? Yes, 1, 2, 3, all these will be significant. Then there will be three significant figures, clear? So now let's move on to the third one, 5005. Yes, so the zeros between two non-zero digits are significant, right? So your 5, 0, 0 and 5, all four are significant. So here you will have four significant figures. Now in here, 500.0. 0, 0. So the zeros after your decimal points are significant, right? So 1, 2, 3 and 4. 4 significant figures here. Now the last one, 2.0034. Here also the zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. There are 5 significant figures. So I hope you are clear with the... Uh, part of significant figures and how you can calculate the number of significance, right? So using each of these rules, I hope you are clear with how to calculate the number of significant figures. So now let's move on to the next part where you see how you can add and subtract your significant figures, okay? So the result cannot have more digits to the right of the decimal point than either of the original numbers, okay? So what does that mean? So let's take the example that is given here. 0 0.326 and 1.2 will give the value as 1.526. 
Okay, I added two significant figures, I got my answer. So what is given here? The result cannot have, the result that is 1.526 cannot have more digits to the right of decimal point than either of the original numbers. So in the first case, how many significant figures are there? There are 3, 2, 6, that means 3 significant figures. And in the second one, there are two significant figures. So that means in your answer, in the result, there must be only two significant figures. Here there are three significant figures and here there are two significant figures. That means your result should only have the lesser number one, which is the lesser one here, two. So that means your result must be only having two significant figures. Now here are the rules that are given how you can round it off to two significant figures in this case, okay. If the rightmost digit to be removed is more than 5, the preceding number is increased by 1. See, the last term here is 6. Yes, you have to, now our task is to round it off to 2 digits. That is 2 significant figures, right? So, the last term here is more than 5. So, what is given here? The preceding number is increased by 1. So, how do I write it? 1.53. It will become 1.53, right? So, now it is 3 significant figures. Again, I have to Round it off, right? If the rightmost digit to be removed is less than 5, the preceding number is not changed. So, see in here the last digit is 3. So, you need not change the preceding number. So, our final answer will be 1.5. So, now it is only two significant figures. Yes, so you understood how to round it off if the number is more than 5 and less than 5. Now, this is in the case of addition and subtraction of significant figures. Now, let's move on to multiplication and division of significant figures. The result cannot have more significant figures than as in the measurement with few significant figures. So, in the case of addition and subtraction, the same we will use in the case of multiplication and division as well. Here, you can see 0.326 multiplied by 1.2 will give you the result as 0.3912. Yes, now your result should have significant figures which is less compared to these two. So, in this you have three significant figures, in here you have two significant figures here. So, like in the before case, you need to have only two significant figures here. So, now what I have to do? I have to round off this value. So, how do you do? 0 0.3912. How can I round it off? My last number is less than 5. So, I need not change my preceding number. So, it becomes 0 0.391. Yes. Now, again my last number is less than 5. Yes. So, I need not change the preceding number. So, it becomes 0 0.39. Yes. Now, you have two significant figures. Yes. Which is equal to the 1.2. Yes, clear? So, this is how you can do the multiplication, division, subtraction and addition of your significant figures. Yes? Now, let's move on to the last topic for today that is dimensional analysis. So, this method is used to convert units from one system to another. So, let's say if I have a quantity which is given in centimeters, I have to convert it to meter or kilometer. Yes? So, the method or uh, the way in which you do this is called as dimensional analysis where you convert one unit to another unit. So, let's quickly do a problem based on it so you can understand what exactly is dimensional analysis. So, how many seconds are there in two days? Yes? So, you have to find how many seconds are there in two days. So, I am converting days into seconds. So, that is what I am doing here. Conversion from one unit to another unit. So, we know that one day equals 24 hours. Yes. And one hour is 60 minutes. Yes. Your one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Right. And you know that one minute equals 60 seconds. Right. So, one hour will be 60 into 60 seconds. Yes. So, what will be 24 hours then? That will be 60 into 60 divided by 1 into 24 seconds. Yes. 60 into 60. See, 1 hour is given as 60 into 60 seconds. Right. So, what will be 24 hours then? 1 hour is these many seconds. So, how much will be 24? 60 into 60 divided by 1 multiplied by 24 seconds. Yes, 
Yeah. So that is what is written here. So one day equal 24 hours. We know that. That is what is written here. One day is 24 hours. So that is what is written here. Now one day is given as 60 into 60 into 24 seconds means how many will be two days? You just have to multiply it. Yes. So 60 into 60 into 24 multiplied by two that will give you these many seconds. So I hope you understood how we converted this two days to these many seconds, right? So this is about dimensional analysis. So I hope what and all we have covered in this session is clear for you. So in the next session, we will be studying about laws of chemical combinations. That is law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportion, law of multiple proportion, Gay-Lussac's law of gaseous volumes, Avogadro's law and Dalton's atomic theory. Okay. Yes. So that's for today. Thank you.